lastly, you guys, I wanted to talk about the Dr. Dre of it all. Y'all, Dr. Dre is being sued by a psychotherapist who basically mm. was his family therapist during his divorce with Nicole Young. And y'all know Nicole accused him of abuse. Um, she said that he, you know, had pulled guns on her, all kind of shit. But the relationship was abusive. Eventually, she divorces. Then she got $2 million, whatever the fact. Either way, 14 months after the divorce... Um, Dr. Dre starts sending all of these text messages to this doctor saying that you talk bad about me to uh, a third party, which was not named. And then also saying that he convinced Nicole and his son to disparage him in the media, like turned his family against him. And I'm mm -hmm. like, the way he is texting this man is giving you're abusive, sir. Whatever Nicole says you did, you did that shit. Cause like, why are you texting this man in the middle of the night? over like months like it's months i only posted put up a little bit of the messages but from like february february or march all the way until august is like the text messages from 2023 of him like he'll just be in the middle of the night oh you think i forgot about you uh, what happened, doc? I thought you wanted to talk. The doctor, because he accused him of something. The doctor was like, I don't know what you're talking about, but we can talk about it. I guess he never said anything back to the doctor. And then later on comes back talking about what happened, doc? I thought you wanted to talk. Cat got your tongue. You're going to have to give me a, a, poly, a written apology. If not, I'm moving forward. I'm not playing. Trust me. The doctor also said he sent goons to his house pretending Ooh. to be FBI agents so that they would let them in the gate to his house to basically let him know you can be touched and i was like that's the same shit i think diddy was doing like sending his goons to people and then they would like dress a certain way so people would think that they were law enforcement when really they were you know just goons for somebody but he said in one of these texts he said let me be crystal clear i know you're a charlatan when i see one it's like if you knew he was a charlatan when you saw him why did you allow him to be the therapist for you and your family for for all of that time before the divorce so i think he's blaming the doctor for what nicole said about him in the media which was that he was abusive towards her um yeah so that's what's going on. He sold him for $10 million. Um, and I feel like the, the man obviously has <laughs> a case here. And everybody's like, oh, you just want a money grab. Everybody wants a money grab. I'm like, I wish y'all would stop saying that. Because essentially, you can sue anybody for anything in America. But a lot of the times with these powerful men, when somebody is accusing you of something and they actually have the text messages, they already have money. Like, I'm sure this man is not poor. Seeing as though he was a psychotherapist for fucking Dr. Dre. That tells right. me he's probably a, a therapist for celebrities or people with money in general. Right. And, you know, like just the way these text messages play out, it just seems like somebody that's probably, I ain't gonna lie, might be on drugs. Because he had a stroke during this time. And let's not forget, remember we talked about April talking about having an A-list ex who had a drug habit and she didn't even mm. know. So I really feel like based on the way some of these text messages look like, you know, how somebody getting high and then all of a sudden something come to their mind and they start texting somebody crazy. That's mm -hmm. kind of what it was given to me. I'm not sure, but I definitely would believe this therapist over Dr. Dre's crazy ass because I feel like he crazy and y'all just keep acting like he not. <laughs> Yeah, they've been saying that allegedly Dr. Dre was abusive. Didn't I even put that in the movie? Isn't it proven? Yeah, no, I'm yeah. like, what happened with is D, mm -hmm. the shit with D Barnes? Is that um on video somewhere? I, I know. Um, I know. I mean, there's been floating uh like videos from the past of her talking about it, but yeah. not so much as like the assault, but definitely her like speaking oh, on it. In the let past. me read how what it say on Wikipedia. On January 27, 1991, she was physically assaulted by Dr. Dre at a rap industry party. Barnes pressed criminal charges and filed a lawsuit. Dre pled no contest to the charges and settled the suit out of court. He issued an apology years later, but did not specifically direct it to the targets of his abuse, including artist Michelle. A. I apologize to the women I've hurt. I deeply regret what I did and know that it has forever impacted all of our lives. Barnes plans on writing a biography of her life, according to Vibe magazine. But yeah, uh, yeah. She was a producer on Pump It Up. That's funny. Mm. Mm. 
yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, do we feel like this is not the truth? Like, let's be real. And Erica De Niro said this, but I feel like this is true based on some pictures I seen of Dr. Dre from back in the day. I think he's one of those, you know, DL men. I can't be gay. I'm angry about it. So I get with women and beat their ass. And I, you know, I just act out my anger all over the place because I'm mad that I can't just be who I am. Because, you know, he very much was giving, you know, I might have been a little. <laughs> you said based on some pictures back in the day. Now, now I got to go look at him. Oh, yeah. Go look at, try to find him from back in the 80s. Dr. Dre 80s. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, yeah. Let's see. There was definitely some glitter at some point. Let me see. It was definitely the style back then, but mm, I don't know. It looks like he has on some eyeshadow in this one. Mm. Let me let me share my screen. <laughs> Y'all, we just out here. Conspiracy theories. Look, whatever the fuck going is on. But this oh. is a, yeah, that's him. Um, and that definitely looks like some eyeshadow on his eye, but I'm gonna leave it alone. But whatever group he was a part of back in the day, it was very much, you know. <laughs> wow. What year was this? <sighs> I think it, I forgot it was definitely the 80, 85, yeah. Like oh, late yeah. 80s. But I remember seeing pictures of him that made me be like, oh, okay. Well, maybe, you know, because I always felt like that was just a style of the 80s, but also niggas was also gay in the 80s. <laughs> so there's yeah. that. So, you know, it does. And then when you see like the start, you know, the difference between his persona in the 80s versus his persona in the 90s. You know, it, it's very much given you felt like you had to prove you was a man to somebody. And I also feel like niggas be on drugs, you know. Niggas be on coke and be like flipping out, you know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Hmm. But I think a lot of celebrity men are more on cocaine than they like to admit, specifically at the height of their careers. You got to keep that energy going. You got shows. You getting fucked up the night before, but you still got to hop on stage. You got to interview. You got to be at the studio. If you don't have a good, you know, healthy way of handling that amount of stress, like you're going to be on drugs. Like that's a part of the reason why Whitney was on cocaine, because she had to keep up such a strenuous schedule. You need to be able to perform and get up. And so, you know, I think a lot of them do drugs out of necessity more mm -hmm. so than just to get high. Performance. Yes, cocaine, mm -hmm. specifically with cocaine. Um, because I've heard it from a lot of different artists that talk about the time when they were on it, why they were using it. Because I needed to get up. I got fucked up the night before. I needed to get up and be able to do whatever I needed to do. Mm -hmm. so, ever since I've been into that wrestling situation, I'm like, child, the wrestling boys was on cocaine like crazy too. So, and they're all <laughs> well, I'm performers. Sure. So, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, y'all, it seems like Dr. Dre might really be y'all next one. Um, if more, I mean, cause a lot of people are already talking about him, but if there's more to be talked about, I wonder if more will come out because he definitely seems like somebody that when he said that apology, he was lying and telling y'all what he felt like y'all wanted to hear. So. Yeah. I mean, all of them is attached in one way or another. So May 2025. I mean, I, I one of the things I wonder about the May 2025 is, are we waiting until May 2025 just for Diddy? Or are y'all going to decide these are all the people that's involved, but we only going to take it, take down these three? You know, are they going to clean up who they're actually going to try uh, take to trial and who not? I'm sure. Probably. We'll see who they clean up. I mean, we already know Cassie is your main defendant. Um, Your boy. Uh. Is Cassie participating? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Can uh -huh. she? With yeah, the they really using her lawsuit. Yes, I think okay. she's victim number one, right? In the, in all of the paperwork, she's victim number one. Um, is largely based off of her testimony. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm wondering because they say that she was supposed to be coming out with a book, and that was how this all started. But have y'all seen or heard anything about a book? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Which makes me wonder, were you actually gonna come out with a book, or were you just telling him that? So you could get him to, you know, admit to shit. Because I feel like 
it's not that easy to get somebody like Diddy. And so what we're being presented with on some level has to have been like a finagling. Like when you see the way some of the lawyers are dealing with this, it's almost like they have to handle it as if they're investigating while kind of accusing him. You know what I'm saying? That's like, exactly what they're doing. Yeah. Because it's like, we know it happened, but we have to be able to put the pieces together. Because I was mm -hmm. wondering, I was like, why would she not also go after Joe Sherman? And I'm like, well, first of all, statute of limitations. Ain't that fucked up? I could have you on video aring me and I still can't do nothing to you because of the statute of limitations. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the Thalia lady? If that's true. Yeah, if that's true about her, like, because I was wondering why Joe wasn't oh. named and I, why he wasn't arrested. If they had video of this, why didn't y'all do something? Statue of limitations. Even if you do have evidence of it, if it's after a certain amount of time, poof. Mm. So that's why, you know, it, everybody was putting their lawsuits in right up. Remember when New York had that time frame right up until yeah, Thanksgiving yeah. or some shit where everybody had to put their shit in last year? That was why that happened like that. Because a lot of the stuff that's been going on, you know, it's been some time. But a lot of these stories about Diddy are also in recent They're years. They're talking about Ashton Kutcher, too. They need to be. Because They're can we talk about his wife being underaged? Huh. I know Mila Kunas was underage on that fucking show. They was on that on 70 show together. But they weren't dating on the show, right? No. She was dating somebody else. But it was something that happened. Remember, there's another guy on the show who was also uh, arrested. Uh, remember? In yeah, yeah, yeah with guy. the curly hair. The Dan yeah. Master, Master, whatever. The yes. one who just was... Did he get convicted of yes, the... Uh, yeah, because they wrote that letter for him. Exactly. They got his defense. Exactly, but they have that sex trafficking nonprofit, which is interesting. And which, what do we hear about those nonprofits that they're usually a front for people that are like that are actually doing it? Like I've heard that before. Like if you have a nonprofit for something, you got to make sure that they're not actually a front for what they're actually supposed to be fighting against. Mm, Maybe I'll it was that all the nonprofit but, anyway. No, for real. For real, you gotta be careful out here. You choose your one and you stick to it. Don't be sending no money to other people. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I also feel like people don't understand how hard it is to prove things criminally versus civilly. Like it's much harder to it's prove. Very hard. Like they always be like, "Why y'all just didn't go to the police?" People do go to the police, and the police like, "Listen, I know based on this evidence, this is not enough for us to prosecute him." Because a lot of the times, think about it: if you're assaulting somebody in private, there's no evidence of it. If it's old enough, there's no more physical evidence of it. Like, how are you? So it's basically he said, she said. So how are you supposed to prove it criminally? You can prove it civilly easier because you don't have to have as much evidence. A lot of the times, if you just have a little bit of something, that's enough to make somebody want to be quiet, which is why I don't understand why y'all think Michael Jackson is so fucking innocent. Mr. I didn't paid out six lawsuits, settled several. My my estate is still settling fucking lawsuits, to, even mm. after I'm dead and gone. But okay. <laughs> it was all because he just wanted it to go away. He was a child. But um, yeah, y'all. The song before... Mm -hmm. Uh, turn off the lights. Nineteen eighty. What about it, Jay Jersey? Thank you for the super chat. But I said all I had to say about Ashton Kutcher was that even though I don't think he was with Mila Kunis back then, I remember watching something that referenced her age. Oh, um, that's the <laughs> comment right there. He, she was fourteen. He was twenty-one when he tongue kissed her on the show. Ah, uh, and she said it was her first kiss. Yeah, I don't think they should have been weird. That. Yeah, I don't think they should have been. I, they can't do that now, right? Now they have to have like so. a kid in order for that to happen, I think. But back in the 90s or the early 2000s, it might have still been like, you know, legal for because there was a lot of movies where adults was. Yes. Yeah. Somebody I mean, else talked about that, too. I, I mean, it. they didn't kiss Shirley Temple, but the way they lusted over that little girl. Oh, yeah. Uh -uh. I hated it because I used to love me some Shirley Temple girl. Mm -hmm. Okay, What? I used to love some fucking movies. <laughs> Yeah, nah, it is definitely a lot of, you got to pay attention to these patterns, man, because you need to be able to guess what people are doing before the video comes out. Because a lot of y'all be really waiting on video evidence. And sometimes you are never going to get video evidence of some of this shit. You got to pay attention to patterns. 
uh, Demi uh, Ashton and Demi being together was weird. Was it? I felt like that was more normal than him kissing the fourth. She was girl. older than her, and she was older yeah, than but him. they was grown, so you know. But still, yeah. No, no, I did kind of feel like he was dating his friend's mom. It did, but she was still kind of hot when she, she came back out. Yeah, she looked good. Oh, um, you know. That uh, remember the second Charlie's Angels movie that they did? I think, and she came out with the two gold glocks. I was like, that bitch looked good because we hadn't seen Demi in a minute. Demi had disappeared on us and then came back out looking good. I was like, all right, Demi, bitch. Okay, mm -hmm. so who You know, that's one of the white women mm -hmm. I actually liked growing up. Her movies used to be good, strip tease and all of that. Yeah, no, the Brooke Shields documentary was wild. Her mom definitely pimped her out. Damn. Definitely. The, I mean, even the publications, like they you can go and look up some of these magazines that they would do with these kids on the fucking cover. That shit was crazy. <sighs> well, anyway, y'all protect your kids, hide your kids, hide your wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and everybody out here. Okay. okay. Listen, y'all see what a follower said on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> this is a good show. I had a good time. We hope y'all right. have a good time. Yeah. We'll be back next week. Like the video, subscribe to our channels because our panel rotates. Next week is going to be on Jamie's channel. My channel. channel. Girl, I cannot keep. Let me tell y'all, so go to hell. Mm -hmm. I can't keep track. Ever since we got out of order, I can't remember who goes next anymore. It's sad. But we love you. We appreciate you guys for being patient with us. And we'll see y'all next time.